Hey guys, welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. I am so glad that you are here today because in this episode, I have some high-end summer decor items for you. This video is part of a collaboration with another YouTuber and I am excited to tell you more about that as we get into the video. But if you like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing. And if you do like what you see in today's video, remember to hit that like button. But let's get creating. I got this little bucket at a yard sale last summer and I've been waiting for a wonderful project to use it with and I'm so excited with how this turns out. Green is not my color so I am going to spray paint it white. You can use one of these little buckets from Dollar Tree if you'd like. It does have the raised letters so just know that. So after I wipe this down I will just spray paint it with white and I wanted to do at Hobby Lobby I've seen some items that say farmhouse local on them. So I just went into Google Images and found an image that I like and screenshotted it and then I printed it on water slide decal paper. I'll leave a link to the paper down in my description box, but it was kind of in this rusty writing and I really liked how it turned out. You'll use this clear gloss after you print your image and you'll spray two coats on the water slide decal paper. You can kind of see this shine there that it gives it and that just protects your ink. Then you'll just cut your image out to whatever size you would like it. I'm just showing you that it was in the middle of the paper and I just cut it out and I kind of detail cut it around the words there. And I'm just deciding which side is the best to place it on. And you'll just get some water. This is just like lukewarm water and you're just going to place it down in. Now it's going to curl up it's okay, just let it curl up because it's not gonna stay like that when it gets on your paper, but you let this soak for about a minute, minute and a half or so. You'll just take it off and it's just going to slide from the backing. And then you're just going to place it on your item and you can leave the back on it until you place it down and then just kind of slide the back out from underneath it. I just chose to slide it off right there because it was starting to come off. And I just find the spot that I like and you just start pressing it down. You will notice that there is some kind of like adhesive or glue or stickiness on the back of this little um, water slide decal and that's what's going to adhere it to your item. So I'm just taking a paper towel and I'm just moving the water from the outside or from the inside to the outside. So I'm just kind of removing any bubbles. I'm pressing down to absorb any water and then you still have room to slide it if you need to slide it either direction or anything like that. It, it's very easy to use and you have a lot of wiggle room to kind of get it just precise and exactly how you want it. So you're just pressing down, removing any uh, air bubbles or anything like that, making sure that there's no wrinkles or anything like that and that you're drying it off. And then you're just gonna let it sit for a little bit to completely dry. Then I am just taking some Mod Podge because I do want this to have a shimmer. The spray paint I used was kind of a chalky finish and that paper, since I sprayed the, sprayed the clear coat on it, is shiny. So I want this all to match. So that way I'm trying to make it so you can't tell that there's a decal on the front of this. So I'm just going over with some clear gloss Mod Podge and you guys, you cannot even tell that there was like an edge or anything to that. It honestly looks like this is printed right onto this bucket. I absolutely love how it turns out and I love the water slide decal paper. This was the perfect size for a couple of little Ikea plants to sit down in, but how cute would a little strand of beads, uh, wooden beads be hanging out of this? I think this is darling. I love it. Something that you definitely use all year round. I just love the greenery in there. It just seems summer and clean and crisp to me. Have you guys ever used the water slide decal paper? It is a total game changer. If you have not, I highly recommend it. So look for that link down in my description box. Collaboration videos are one of my favorites because I love getting to work with other creators, but most of all, I love introducing you to people who are going to give you wonderful creative inspiration. And today is no exception to that. I would like to introduce you to Mia from Make It With Mia. Mia has such a wonderful sense of style and she makes such beautiful creations. Down in my description box is going to be a link to her video today. She is also creating some summer decor ideas for you. So definitely click that and get those wonderful ideas. Make sure you say hi from Emily from Farm Term Chic. I know you guys are such a wonderful community that you are definitely going to go show her some support on her YouTube journey. Here's just a look at some of the things that she has created. I think they're absolutely beautiful. Just going through her Instagram Instagram page you guys she has so many beautiful DIYs and these were just a few that stood out to me so definitely remember to click that link down in my description box head over and watch Mia's video and show her some love and support but let's get right back to creating 
I don't know if you guys remember back when I got this little sugar mold off of Amazon. I absolutely love it. I've been looking through the antique stores to find one. You can find them at a lot of different home decor stores right now, but I'll leave a link to this one that I found on Amazon. And I had decorated it for spring with some carrots like this. And I'll leave a link to that video if you wanna see how I did that. But I am going to change it up for summer. I was so excited to find this on Amazon and it was fairly affordable and I just wanted to be able to change it for seasons. So I had just lightly hot glued this little picture on there and I'm just showing you it comes right off. It looks perfectly great and I'm just going to update it with a little bit of a summer flare. I have this faux lavender that I got at Joann's and I'm just cutting off like three little sprigs to go in each of the little holes there. You could easily use anything from Dollar Tree would be super easy and super cute. Whatever your favorite florals were, you can make it whatever color. Down in each of the little hole sections, I just have some Spanish moss and a little bit of reindeer moss on top to add a little bit of greenery. I did not glue those down in because I wanted it to be, um, I wanted to be able to remove it for different seasons if I needed to, if I had different ideas. Now I'm just taking some burlap ribbon and I am just going to put this around all of the edges and I will just glue it, not to the wood, but I will just glue the ribbon to itself so it's easily removable when I'm ready to change it. Keep in mind that where this is not exactly straight up and down, there is an angle to it. The ribbon doesn't sit completely flat on the back. It kind of curves up, if that makes sense. You'll be able to see when I flip it over. Um, and so it is gonna go next to a wall, against a wall, so you would not see that. So just keep that in mind of where you're putting yours. I have this little chicken wire ribbon that came from Hobby Lobby. And I know this does not show up the best on camera. You can see it really well in person, the contrast. So if, I, if you were to do this or wanted to do a darker color of ribbon or something, I just thought this added a little bit of texture and I loved it. Can you see how that doesn't sit completely straight on the back? Like it kind of goes up to a little bit of a peak and that's just because this is kind of a, an angled cut that's to the piece of wood. Now I just kind of wrap the ends of the uh, twine there, not the twine, I'm doing twine right now, but of the chicken wire on the back to uh, make sure that that stays. And then I just take um, a few yards of jute twine and just wrap it around the chicken wire to add just another little element of texture there. And then I'll do, I'm going to do a cute little bow to put on the front of it. So I'll just tie this off in a knot here and then I'm just wrapping around my finger some jute twine and I wrap it around maybe 20 times or so to make a bunch of little loops. And then I'll just wrap a centerpiece around four or five or six times, I'm not really sure. I just do it till it looks good. And then I'll just tie that off in the back in kind of just a little knot there. And I'll use those as the little tails that come down. So I snip those, I make sure it looks good. I'm snipping off the other little tails from that little tie. So it'll have a, some cute little tails as well. And I just kind of fanned that bow out. And you could do whatever color ribbon you want. These are just what I had here. And I know that they kind of all blend together here on camera. You can see them better in person, um, but a different color of twine would be absolutely darling like a light color or something to have a little bit more contrast but it really does look cute I love how it turns out guys I love this little sugar mold I am so excited for every season you'll probably see me do a few more of these to kind of give you ideas to style them because it is so versatile I mean I think I paid $13 for this sugar mold and it's going to be in my house all year long and there's so many different fun things to do and I'll leave a link to that down in my description box if you'd like to check that out Don't forget that I'm on Instagram also. I love to meet new Insta friends, so I would love for you to come over and say hi, check out my page, and see all the latest projects that I'm working on. I'll be sure and leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. Do you guys remember when I made this gothic window? It was about a year ago when I made it. I'll leave a link to the video down in my description box, but I wanted to make one that was a little bit of a different shape and had a little bit of a different size to it and a different design in it. So that's what I'm going to tackle today. I found an image on Canva. You can find them on Google Images. You can purchase window designs on Etsy and I just printed it out across multiple pages. I used an app called Split Print on my MacBook and it does cost about $5 for the app, but you get to do as many times as you would like to, as many different designs like this. Whereas if I was to pay for an engineering print, I would have to pay every time that I did it. So I thought it was a decent investment. So I just cut my design out on the, like a right angle. You can see kind of on the side and the bottom of my window. And I'm just using some Gorilla Spray adhesive. Be very careful with this stuff. It does get to be very sticky. I just put a light coat here and then I will place the straight edge of the side of the window and of the base of the window again. So that way I know that those two sides right there are going to be completely straight. 
I just rub out any air pockets, get that adhered really well. And then just using my drill with a large enough drill bit that my jigsaw um, blade will fit through. I just drill what are called pilot holes in each of like the window openings. So you can see how each of those window areas have one there. So I can stick that blade of my jigsaw down through there. Now, if you've never used a jigsaw before, never fear. I'm here to hopefully calm your fears a little bit. That window that you saw at the beginning of my video was the very first time I had ever used a jigsaw. They are very easy to use. I was really nervous the first time I used one that it was going to be like more than I could handle. It was going to go so fast and I was not going to be in control and that couldn't be further from the truth. You have complete control. You have a little trigger that you'll press with your finger on the handle and you get to control how fast you go or how slow that you go. So it is very easy. You get the hang of it very, very quickly. Once I started to use my jigsaw, my like literally my creating world exploded with possibilities of different things that I could do. So if you have one at your home or if you have thought about purchasing one before this one is one that plugs in you can see i have a cord on it i think i paid about 60 dollars for it so it is a little bit of an investment they do have lesser uh, price models but i was given the advice to spend a little bit extra for a little bit nicer one because it is a little smoother so i, I can't tell you what the other ones feel like but this one is really nice and it is very easy to use I always wear my safety glasses when using any of my power tools. I do, however, like to wear some earplugs when I am doing my jigsaw. Um, this project from beginning to totally the end probably took about an hour and a half and that's with painting it and everything. So the cutting out process took maybe like 45 minutes or so, not super long. Once you get going, it moves fairly quickly. You can just see that you have to stick your blade in those pilot holes and kind of work your way up to the lines on the window there. And my window, you can see the frame has that little like area that like I didn't cut that little white area out in my frame. I decided to have a thick frame. So I'm just cutting along the outside of it. So I'm just going up around the exterior of my window right now. And then you'll be able to see that as I go back up on this other side that I'm just holding on to the window with my other hand. So that way when I make the last cut and it kind of breaks free, you'll be able to see here in just a moment, it doesn't fall on the ground and break or anything. I'm just holding on to it. So I, I will be able to catch that. So you'll see here as I get to that point, the window comes loose and I'm able to just have that with my hand and so easy. Now, when you have your, your jigsaw, it's got that trigger on it. So when you're pushing it, it goes. And as soon as you let go, your jigsaw stops. So you have total control over that. So now I'm just kind of peeling off this paper. If you need to use like a wet sponge or anything or sand it off, you can. Now, when you first cut it out, you're like, this looks kind of ugly. Like the, it's, the cuts are not super straight, but that's what you want. You want this window to look like it was carved out of wood. So you're just going to soften all of those cuts with a sander. I recommend using an electric sander on this. You could use a block sander, but it would take a lot of time. But I'm just going around all of the edges, kind of rounding them off a little bit. Again, we want this window to look like it was carved out of wood and maybe has just sat around and been aged for a long time. So I sand both sides of it. Every little area that was cut with the jigsaw, I sand. And then I just take this into my studio and I'm just going to give it a couple of coats of white chalk paint. This is the fun part because you can tailor this to what your decor needs are or how you want to decorate it you'll just do front and back and then you have to remember to go inside all of those little areas as well so now I'm going to make just a little window seal so I am just taking one of the five gallon paint stir sticks from the hardware store and I'm just marking it off where I want I'm just using my little miter box there to cut that off with and then I'm just sanding the edges on it so it matches and I put some wood glue along the base of that now I had not painted the base of that so it's like you know, the bare wood touching bare wood. And I'm just clamping that as I go through and distress this. So just using, I'm a big fan of fingernail files because of the detail that they can, little spaces they can get into. So whatever you use to sand with, I just go around all of the edges. It takes a couple of minutes to do this, but it's just gonna knock some of the paint off just to make it look aged because that is what we're going for. And then using some mineral paint, which is very close to that original color of the MDF board that is sticking through there. You'll just go ahead and dry brush it 
on to kind of give a little bit more distress. Now you could skip sanding completely and use that mineral paint if you would like to. So I have this cute little wreath and this is what I intended to do with this window is I wanted to add a little bit of greenery onto my wall, but I wanted a cute little design behind it. So I just took this wreath and I fed through some twine on there and just tie that onto the window itself. When I hang this, I will just stick a couple of nails where the little crossbars are at the top of my window so it will rest on those, but you could easily add hardware onto the back. I would love to know what your guys' thoughts on this window is. I absolutely love them. I love making them. It's such a fun project. It is a great beginner's project for a jigsaw. Find someone that knows how to use power tools if you're kind of scared to use them and have them kind of help you. It only takes one or two times of using them with someone there for you to get that confidence and be able to make these projects. But I, I'm so excited to hang this and I absolutely loved how it turned out. It would even be cute to just have sitting like this resting against something you wouldn't even have to hang it. would like to take just a minute to thank each and every one of you for taking time out of your day to watch this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you to all of you who have subscribed to my channel. That has meant the world to me. And thank you for those who take time to hit that thumbs up button or to comment on my videos. You guys, all of it means so much to me. I love to hear your sweet words. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you have a favorite from today's video, I would love for you to leave me a comment and let me know which one. If you did like any of the projects, remember to hit that thumbs up button. I would love for you to leave me a comment down in the description box of if you liked to see the jigsaw um, project that I did my window, if you like to see the power tool items like that, because I will keep different DIYs like that coming if you guys are enjoying them. I also want you to remember to click that link in my description box, head over to Mia's channel and watch her video. Let her know that Emily from Farm term chic sent you you guys are such a great community i know you're going to do that and you're going to go show her some love she really is wonderful and does such beautiful diys as always i would like to remind you to be safe be smart be nice be happy choose to have a good day because you are amazing thank you so much guys i'll see you next time if you enjoyed the video that you just saw here's another one that you might enjoy and as always remember to like and subscribe thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day